morning, and welcome to 8.30 worship here at Pleasant View United Methodist. I don't see any faces in this room that I don't recognize, but for the benefit of those who might be watching uh, online, my name is Barbara Farmer. I'm the associate pastor here at Pleasant View, and it's my privilege to welcome you to this place. You know, we have a, a young man in our household who will be turning seven this week. And his word of the week is lovely. Everything that, that Jake describes is lovely. So I am just so thankful for this lovely winter morning and uh, with the, the prediction of snow in the morning, which to a Southwest Virginia mountain gal like me, that also is lovely. I have some announcements for you. First of all, if you would take that little notebook that's located probably at the left end of your pew and record your attendance, it's good for the, the office to know that, that you were here and any changes in your demographic information, if you would indicate that. And also, as you look around, we've been asking you for several weeks, if you notice somebody who used to be present and is no longer there in your little area of the sanctuary, Please note that name on the on the pew pad, and if you're so inclined, give that person a call and just let them know that they're missed. We we have missed people because folks were were not here because of, of um, you know just not being here due to COVID, and then wearing masks, and it's hard to recognize folks behind the mask. So there are a lot a lot of folks that that we don't know that are missing. If you would help us to remember those. Also, Sunday, January 16th, the Children's Ministry Team is sponsoring a camp fundraiser um, in the Family Life Center. It, it will be a meal, and if you are so inclined to help with that, if you would let Catherine know, all funds that are um, raised from this fundraiser will go to send our children to summer camp this summer. Also, we have a finance committee meeting this Thursday night at 6.30. I failed to get that in the bulletin, but if you would note that on the, on the, if you keep up with the calendar on the back of your bulletin, and Thursday at 6.30, finance team. And it's my privilege to uh, welcome to, to this congregation of the United Methodist Church someone who has been a part of us for quite some time, Judy Leonard Owens. So Judy is transferring to to us today from Adlin United Methodist Church in Bristol. And I think that's all I have, unless Dale can think of something I have slipped over or forgotten. I, and I assume Marva is our new aunt, so if you would stand as she leads us in our first hymn this morning. I am the new and improved milk fricker. Please stand, and I'll ask you to sing out as we do our first hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
remain standing. First of all, before we declare our belief, I would just like to ask you to turn and greet your neighbor with a friendly smile and a, and a wave. Just turn around and see who is here. And now, Christians, I ask you, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, the third day and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now, if you would be seated, Marva will lead us in our second hymn. Yes, our second hymn this morning is What Child Is This? This time, let us go to the Lord in prayer with turn your eyes upon Jesus. very lengthy prayer list today, if you note on the back of your bulletin, is an updated list of, of folks who have been asked to be prayed for and others who have requested prayer. On my list this morning, I have these names that we have been uh, calling out regularly over the past several weeks, but we continue to pray for Michael Sanders, Evie Jane Hayden, Pam Brown, 
Jane Olson, Sue Dollinger, Ann Tate, Grace Fleener, and Grace was, was moved, uh, she fell in and broke her, broke her hip. She's been moved to, I think it's called Encompass now. These, these rehab places change names so frequently that she is in rehab. Don Fry, Doug Harmon, Helen Henderson, Tyler Arnold, Kate Buchanan, Aline Lambert, Jamie Turner, the survivors of tornadoes, and also I would like to add to that folks who are recovering from, from COVID and also those folks who fight severe depression, particularly this time of year. Rhonda DePetro contacted me yesterday and asked that we pray for her mom, Ingrid uh, DeBeck, who has been placed in hospice. John Mowry, remember him as he is in waiting mode, waiting to be scheduled for shoulder surgery and experiencing quite a bit of pain. Also, Steve Holloway <coughs> had a procedure this week to have a defibrillator implanted, and he called this morning and, and asked that I tell you that he's doing, doing very well from that procedure. And I would ask if, if you had any, any requests that you'd just like to call out um, if not, what about just a raised hand of her? An unspoken request that you and God know about. Would you pray with me? Father, um, it's a good time to be alive. It's a good time to be part of your kingdom. And I thank you for the, these who are seated in this room today, Father, that they are, they are regular, they are, they are dependable, they are children of the Most High God who see the importance of gathering together regularly just for the benefit of fellowship. And I ask you, Lord, to bless the fellowship of believers and the communion of saints. Those are words that we say regularly and have really very little comprehension of, of the uh, eternal value in those words. But we know that you told us to do it because it's important and we gain strength from each other. So I pray this morning as we listen to, to the uh, guys sing and we participate in worship, that you would be present and strengthen this congregation. Prepare us for the days ahead, Father. And above all, I hear the voice of Jesus and the voice of the angels saying, don't be afraid. So that, that is, is my mantra, Father. It's what, what I tell myself all the time when... When panic rises up within me, I say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So may we remember that over and over. And you tell us, don't be afraid. And Father, I thank you for that ancient prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when they said, teach us how to pray. And he said, pray in this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now is our
is a life of gathering blue, sorrowing sigh, bleeding die, sailed in that storm cold too. Glorious Father, we give you thanks for the offering in these two um, offering plates. To us, they're paper and, and metal coins, but in your hands, Father, they become miracles of your grace. So thank you for willing givers and bless this offering in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Now, if you're going someplace new, how do you find it? You've never been there before. Yeah. A map. And what does a map do? It shows you where to go. It shows you where to go. And we used to use these um, old crazy things that were made out of paper that were maps. What do people use now? Google Maps. We got we got cell phones, right? Tell us where to go now. Yeah, and that's helpful. Well, in our scripture lesson, we're gonna meet the wise men. Well, and what else did they use? What was in the song we just heard? What is it? We just got saw the star because they saw the star, right? Yeah, and they. They knew a king had been born. Yeah. And they went to Jesus. Who? They knew Jesus. Yeah, and they went to find him, right? Yeah. And they went on the wild camels. <laughs> Do they ride on camels? Yeah. And, well, they got close, and then they had to stop and ask for directions. So they asked King Herod, and he wasn't sure. So he talked to to people that were smarter and and but it started to get King Herod a little worried. He was a new king, but he was king. Made him a little nervous. Uh oh. But he told the wise men where to find him. Where? Where was Jesus born? In the stable. Yeah, they know what's going on this morning, don't you? Well, so. And the wise men used that star, and they found Jesus, and they gave him gifts. Gifts, frankincense. Myrrh, frankincense, and there's one more. Oh, thank you, ladies. Thank you for helping me out. And do you know what they did when they saw Jesus? They bowed down. They bowed down, and they worshipped him. Now, today... Yeah, there are people 
people that are still looking for Jesus. Do you know that? There are people that are looking for Jesus. Now, we can't find Jesus on a map, right? No, no so maps not going to help us. And um, is there a really bright star like the wise men had? No. No. Okay. Um, how, do, how do they help people find Jesus? He does, but where else can we find Jesus? In our hearts. In the Bible. Oh, there we go. It's getting worried. He's in the Bible. If we want to learn more about God, we read His Word. If, or if um, um, an angel picks up a leaf, he follows it. Okay. Now, what about... We can pray. Now, the wise men did have to get a little help to find Jesus, right? Yeah. So they went and asked for help. Who can help us find Jesus? Who are some of the people that might help us find Jesus? The people that are already found. The people that already found Jesus. Can you give me some examples? What about our Sunday school teachers? Yeah. And our parents? Right, and do you have a bunch of people out there that love you and love Jesus, want to help you find Him? And what about our pastors? Oh, they're good people to help us find Jesus too, right? Would you guys pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Help us continue to look for Jesus and help others find Him. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's good to see you taking you out in worship today. Um, if I do this incorrectly, I will apologize later, but, but uh, somebody told me that uh, somebody here this morning might be having a special birthday. That uh, is, is Doyle, is, are we close to your birthday? No? Okay, well... I, it didn't look that way on my records, but anyway, if it were your birthday, I wanted to wish you a happy birthday. So, um, anyway, uh, before I get into the scripture this morning, uh, is it okay if I take a minute and, and say something really nice about all of you? Um, on the, at our Christmas Eve services, we encourage folks to give um, to our disaster relief fund. We are going to be making health and hygiene kits for the folks where the tornadoes were so devastating, and um, also to the local soup kitchen. And um, the reason I want to brag on you is this. I was, uh, in my mind, hoping for maybe 1500 or $2,000 from that offering, and he gave over $7,000 on Christmas Eve to that. And uh, thank you and thank the Lord for that um, good response. And uh, you'll be hearing uh, something about a packing party shortly for us to uh, pack the health and hygiene kits and get them on their way. I'm reading this morning from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And if you're able, I invite you to stand with me as we share together in the reading of Scripture. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, 
Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod heard, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. (laughs) Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest of the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the Word of God for the people of God, and we say together, thanks be to God. Please be seated. My first introduction to the wise men was in the children's pageant that was done in the church of my childhood. All of us kids were assigned roles in the pageant. If you were a guy, there was a good chance that you were either going to be a shepherd or a wise man. I always wanted to be one of those two classes of people in the pageant. But I think I was often typecast because it seemed like every year I was to play the ox in the stable. I'm sure it had nothing to do with my size. But I was always jealous, particularly of the wise men. They got to wear their tin foil crowns and their fake beards and their father's bathrobes as they walked down the aisle of the church singing. We Three Kings. Through the years, I have spent time trying to learn as much as I could about these mysterious visitors from the East. Matthew doesn't tell us how many people were in the party. We get the number three from the gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. We get that they were men from some of the earlier English translations that called them wise men. Our more recent translations usually translate it as magi, astrologers. As a kid, like probably all of the rest of you, I saw the Christmas story all pushed conveniently into the end of December. The shepherds showed up at the stable, then they left, and then came the wise men. Later, I would learn that these strange visitors from the East 
could possibly have shown up as much as two years later. Many astronomers believe that it was the alignment of Jupiter and Saturn that created the Christmas star. I don't know how many of you had a chance to experience that firsthand last year. But on December the 23rd, the star was so bright where, where the two planets had come together that I took my granddaughter, then nearly four years old, and we both bundled up and took my binoculars and went outside and we saw the star. It was so cool. I found them and found it in my binoculars and got a good close-up look. And then Miss Olivia took her turn looking at the star. And I got to tell her the story of these strange visitors from the east who came looking for the one to be born king of the Jews. I saw what could only be understood as a contemporary rending of a nativity scene by one of our pastors who had way too much time on her hands. She had taken a nativity set and to scale, she had gone in and take lines on the table and then she would move back a bit and tape another line and move back a bit and tape another line. And then here were shepherds each behind the line on this side, and here were the Magi, each behind the line on this side, and it was catching a socially distanced nativity scene as each of them kept their uh, six feet distance to scale. And the truth of the matter is, we have no idea how it all came down except in the very bare story that we're told. These visitors from the east came to Jerusalem and inquired of King Herod, where is the one who is born king of the Jews? For we have observed the star at its rising. These Eastern stargazers had observed and understood that God was up to something. And so they asked Herod where the child was, and Herod did not know. And Herod asked his religious leaders, and somebody remembered what the prophet Micah had written. 600 years earlier. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. The star had led the Magi from the east to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, somebody was able to quote the prophet Micah and say, well, you're close, but you need to go to Bethlehem. They went from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. And in the midst of all that we could lift up out of this passage, I remember most this verse. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. They were thrilled to death when they saw the star that had led them all that way. And now on the final very short leg of their journey. 
the star appeared and they were able to find Jesus. And there they opened their treasuries and presented gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Rare, expensive gifts were placed at the feet of humble people through whom God would change the world. The the story of the wise men has been embellished. People have used their imagination. Most of us have seen a mall and the night visitors more than once in our lifetime. If you're a singer, you've sung in a mall and the night visitors more than once. But all of that is legend. We we even have three names for three kings that are steeped in legend but not in history. Here's what we do know. These visitors from the east saw in the sky that God was up to something and they wanted to be a part of whatever God was up to. And so they traveled. Travel in our days is a headache for many reasons, but not because we have to hop on camels and ride for days and weeks and months. These visitors had to persevere. They had to keep going. Doubtless people would say to them, where are you going and why are you going there? And their answer would have to be, well, we're not sure. Well, how will you know when you get there? We'll know. And so they traveled. And they traveled. And they traveled so that when they finally got to the place, the English Standard Version says they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. I think in our version of English, we would say they were thrilled to death because Their hard work had paid off. Their search had brought them to the place they wanted to be to worship at the feet of one who would later be proclaimed King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We tell this story every year and Some years I think, well, what else can I say about this story? And then other years, I just begin traveling on my camel and my imagination. And I start wondering what it was like. Wondering the about the expense of such a trip. Most of us, before we take a trip, we count the cost. Wondering if they got tired of each other's company. Wondering if they took turns being doubtful, but faithful. The bottom line is their long journey ended in joy because they were willing to go on the long journey. In our Wesleyan understanding, a 
of grace. The hour we first believe we refer to as justifying grace. And then all of those hours after that, we live in sanctifying grace. Putting one foot in front of the other, not knowing the future into which we step, but persevering anyway. That's one place where we can intersect with these folks. Yesterday was a football lover's dream. There was something to watch all day, and even you could stay up half the night and still watch some football. But in the midst of, of trying to hold an audience, there are always those human interest stories that they do usually when the game's got a little lopsided. And they tell the story of this player or that player. And the one I remember most vividly was a kid who was, when he was seven years old, he announced to his parents where he would be playing football in college and what position he would be playing when he got there. And the seven-year-old boy grew up to see that very dream fulfilled for that very school in that very position. What about our dreams? What about our ability to stick with it? I ran across an article by a gentleman by the name of Steve Ferrer. And his article was entitled, Finishing Strong, Finding the Power to Go the Distance. And he organized his thinking around the word stay, S-T-A-Y. And he said we need to stay in stay in the Scriptures and to meditate regularly on what the Bible says. One of my reading projects over the past few days has been reading Tony Dungy's biography. Talking about the pinnacle of success, talking about the low days of disappointment, and talking about wherever he was on that continuum, he was always in the Scriptures. Now folks, some of you have talked with me about it, so I know that some of you are seeing it, but if you're not seeing it, let me tell you, our new bishop is inviting us all to read the Bible with her in 2022. And every day, if you sign up for her email list, every day she will send you the scripture readings for that day. And you'll have them on your phone or your computer or your tablet if you're... Uh, device, electronics people. And she is asking the question, how would we all be different if we all read the Bible together in a year's time? So I encourage you, if you're one of those people who know how to sign up for the emails to do that now, I make this offer and I mean it. If you would like to sign up for that and don't know how to do it, call me when I'm at my desk and I'll turn on my computer 
and I'll walk you through it. But the place to begin is Holston, that's the name of our conference, dot O-R-G. And um, if you get lucky, you can find the direct link there. Send them your email address, and then those scripture readings will show up every day in your inbox for the entire year. And since yesterday was a Saturday, she's asking us to begin today. So if you would like to get those, please let me know and I'll, I'll help you find those. It's a way to stay in, to stay in the Scriptures, because when we stay in the Scriptures, God has an opportunity to speak to us in ways that sometimes we might miss otherwise. Stay in and then stay close to trusted friends for purposes of holding each other accountable. Many of you in this congregation are part of Emmaus groups. And you do just that. You get together week after week and you encourage each other and hold each other accountable. It's good. There's another Bible reading app out there that, that you can sign up and, and say, I want the following people to know what I'm reading. And uh, several folks have looped me in on that so I can look on and see who's reading what in the Bible. It's a good way to stay accountable. Stay close with each other and to offer account of each other and to each other. The third day he talks about is to stay away. Stay away from those things that we know will cause us to stumble and fall. My friends, we know ourselves and we know our weaknesses all too well. We know. And Satan is about to trick us. Because Satan always attacks us at our vulnerable spots. And your vulnerable spot and my vulnerable spot are different. And so, one of the things as we persevere in our faith is to stay away from those things that we don't handle well. And then this, to stay alert, to pay attention to what is going on around us so that we can, in fact, keep the faith Life is a marathon and not a sprint. And so during these early days of the year when for many of us we attempt to change old behavior patterns, let's hear this word from the Lord about visitors from the East who stayed with it. And let's think about how we can stay in so that when we get to our destination, it can be said of us, they rejoice with exceeding great joy. Would you stand with me for our closing hymn? second and last verse of I Surrender All.
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of His countenance upon you and give you peace.